Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. We are here today with another live stream uh, with our friends from Rivet Networks, makers of killer networking hardware. We have with us mm -hmm. Mike Cubbage, Hello. CEO at Rivet. Yep. Uh, welcome. Thanks for coming all the way out to Florence, Kentucky. It's not a short <laughs> short walk for anybody these Wonderful days. Wonderful time of year here. It is. Uh, you know, what is it? It's not super cold yet. Right, and yeah. you're from way colder. Yeah, I'm from Minnesota, so yeah, living it's... in Austin though, so I've made the, the smart move already. <laughs> <laughs> Your body has adapted to the warmth yeah, absolutely. already at this point. Okay, uh, absolutely. Uh, all right, so you are here from Rivet Networks. Mm -hmm. Maybe introduce uh, yourself and what Rivet Networks is for people who don't know that name. Sure. Very familiar with maybe the killer brand, but not what what Rivet is. Sure. So Rivet is a company that now is in charge of the entire killer product line. Um, and it came from a succession of companies. So obviously Bigfoot Network started the entire killer product line. Yep. Then we moved to Qualcomm. Qualcomm acquired Bigfoot in 2011. And now Rivet Networks is the, the company going out there with really trying to make a name in both game and performance networking in general. Now I have this little accessory off to the side that I just wanted to show. This is uh, from the original Killer Network Absolutely. card. This was actually the heatsink on the card, right? Absolutely. Yes, and, it was. And uh, at the CES where you guys kind of launched it, because you've been with Since Killer the Brand time, from yep. the beginning, they basically made necklaces out of this. Absolutely. And they hand away. And you were talking about stories about people trying to get a hold of these and like offering up bar tabs for them and Absolutely. stuff like that. I didn't know they were so valuable. Good trading stuff right there. I think, <laughs> I think the, 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 the biggest so far is $80 worth of drinks at a Las Vegas bar for a worth. killer. We call it cabling, by the way. So it's our, our cabling. <laughs> um, okay, so... You guys have been around for a while. When, yep. when was that CES? Was it 2008? Yeah, probably 2007, if I had to guess. So we launched our first product in August 2006, okay. the Killer M1. So it was a, a full PCIe you know, network card, had a 400 megahertz network processor on it. Right. It was basically like a little blade server. And that, that's one of the things we'll talk about today. But one of the things a lot of people still think is, hey, you know, Rivet, Killer, they still make discrete network cards. And we've come, we haven't actually sold a discrete network card in over five years. So hmm. as we get into it, that's something to note here is, but, you know, we had four or five awesome years of selling those. Yeah. Um, but we've, we've really made a lot of progress when it comes to value per buck, I would say. Okay. So uh, lots to share there. So let's walk through some of the stuff that you brought sure. here to show you. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to walk through some presentation uh, here that, that, that you brought with you. Yep. Uh, talk about a little bit the company, about the technology on yep. it. Uh, maybe what people do and don't know about what exists sure. on on laptops that have that in there, or, or motherboards that have that in there. And also, yep. of course, we can't forget that uh, we're using all Alienware systems out here for the demos. We're actually going to give one of them away. This is an, an Alienware 13R2 yep. gaming notebook. It's got a GTX 960M graphics yep. in there. It's obviously it's got killer wireless and wired. Yep networking on it as well. So we're going to give you like a, a, a URL here in just a minute. Actually, we'll go ahead and put it up because you don't have the answers to the questions quite yet. But if you go to pcper.com slash killer contest, yep. you'll see the form there that you can uh, enter uh, in multiple different ways to sign up to win this. We'll answer those questions. There's a couple of questions that you have to answer to really be entered in uh, and we'll answer them as we yeah. go. It's a great, I mean, that's what I actually use for my personal, my personal system right here is an actual Alienware 13 R2. Yeah. It's, a, it's an awesome system. Yeah. So some lucky winner can walk away with that. Brand new in box. Just opened it Absolutely. up to, to show it for you guys here today. So we'll, we'll mention that a couple of times throughout uh, the live stream today, but let's go ahead and get into uh, what we've got. Yeah. So there's, there's the, the R2, as you hopefully see down there. Yep. yep. There's the R2 that we're giving away. So almost a thousand dollars of MSRP for you. That's um, awesome. So this is where a lot of people, you kind of remember Bigfoot and Killer. You know, we started with the M1, just like Ryan said. And as you notice, I put the products that we launched at Big, as Bigfoot kind of across the top, and I put their price points below. Mm -hmm. And one of the initial things about, the, you know, the first products that came out was, hey, cool technology. We actually were help frames per second. We, you know, reducing latency was kind of our, our core value prop. But for $279, that was, that's a big price tag to go it after. It was, it was, even, especially at the time. Yes. Right, yeah. I mean, and we took up slots and all that kind of stuff. So over time, we tried to get more and more efficient. That was the feedback we got from people is, hey, you know, generally like the feature set, but you guys are way too expensive. So we came down. So in 2007 was the K1, $179. 2009, we called it the Xeno, Xeno Pro, was $129. And we got all the way down to $79 with the Killer 2100. So a lot of progress, but still, quite frankly, not good enough. In 2011, we, uh, we introduced our first wireless product. This was a 3x3 11N wireless product um, with the goal of basically taking the latency, which was really high in wireless, down to something a lot more manageable. 
And so that's where we kind of left it as Bigfoot. So at, at this stage, you know, we had some really cool kind of, you know, networking technology on the PC side. Right. Um, Bigfoot was also working on router QoS. So one of the big reasons that we started getting interest from acquirers was, hey, look, the, the gaming stuff was interesting, but we started working on some network QoS that would be, you know, is actually shipping today in other routers like uh, Netgear, D-Link have both shipped a technology mm, called okay. Stream Boost, which yeah. is what they actually got from Bigfoot when we were acquired by Qualcomm. Okay. Which is kind of the next phase of our life here. So in 2011, Bigfoot was acquired by Qualcomm. Again, me and a lot of the team have been there since day one at Bigfoot. So we, we lived the whole journey at Bigfoot as kind of a venture back company. We got acquired by Qualcomm. Qualcomm, I would say, was a, a really good chance for us to get way deep into the, to the you know, standard hardware and figure out, hey, could we have some really big impact on what we were getting on the hardware side. Okay. So Qualcomm obviously sells Ethernet. They sold um, wireless as part of their acquisition of Atheros. Right. Um, so we got access to some of the greatest technology out there. And then we also got to say, hey, look, here's what we would like. You know, if you're going to build a gaming networking product from the ground up, here's what we need to do. And, and Qualcomm Atheros was very interested in doing that for us. So as of right now, you know, we're both the software on top, but we're really deep into the hardware. And a lot of the features and benefits and how we manage queues and registers and all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a very close mar marriage between the hardware okay. and the software. Mm -hmm. So Qualcomm acquired us in 2011. Um, again, we grew from a, both a killer perspective and from a, from a router perspective. And then in 2012, this, this next slide, Tom talks about where we made a massive shift. So, Again, going from a $79 network card to a gigabit Ethernet controller. And this was, again, having all of those resources at Qualcomm to be able to actually help us with the chip. We were able to offer the same value on a, from a $79 card as a gigabit Ethernet controller. And just to describe what that is, it's a 5x5 millimeter piece of silicon right. that sits off the RJ45 jack. And everything that you have from Killer is that. So we were never trying to you know make a lot of money and we were trying to get our product out there but at a five by five millimeter chip the 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 price premium for killer has basically come down all the way where we're either you know a very very small premium or no premium at all to a standard networking product hmm. so again in, in my lifetime we went from 79 dollars to something that is literally no premium versus a five by five. 279 starting with the with the initial yeah, yeah, card, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. 279. So yeah, okay. we, we've come down, you know, basically over 99%. So <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good, uh, you know, and, and yeah. with the same features, I would argue. Okay. Um, the other cool thing we did is we, we really went after wireless too. So, you know, I would argue most gamers are still pretty sold when they can be to hook up via wired, mm -hmm. but you're getting these beautiful notebooks. I mean, a lot of these notebooks, some of them have desktops, graphics cards, they're a lot more powerful. They're becoming systems that I think you can truly game on for the first time. For sure. And, you know, people want to, you know, if they can sit down and they can wire up, great. But if they can't, you know, we want them to have a really good gaming experience via wireless. And frankly, there's a lot more variability. There's a lot more things going on with wireless. So we basically went back and said, hey, what can we do, do to really reduce latency, to really give you a great almost wired experience with the wireless card. And that's what we really did when we were at Qualcomm. We took with Killer 1202 and the Killer 1525, and we made them products that, that literally have half a millisecond more latency than a wired product. So again, you're not the fastest, but you're getting really close. So that, that was a big step forward for us was uh, the okay. wired product, wireless products. Um, kind of moving on from there, you know, kind of where we're at today is Rivet Networks, as of end of last year, took control of the Killer brand and Killer products. Um, this was really exciting for me personally. You know, we, we made it a long way at Qualcomm, but at the same time, um, we really wanted to go after the gaming and performance markets. And you know, the, the really big, quite frankly, networking guys, you know, Qualcomm, Intel, Realtek, Broadcom, mm -hmm. they make mass market solutions, and it's really hard for them to go after a particular market. Mm -hmm. Well, our, you know, the Rivet guys, a lot of them are from the Bigfoot team also, really passionate about gaming, really passionate about performance networking, we really wanted to go after this market and really go after a certain couple segments. And, and that's what we did. So as of December of last year, we became Rivet Networks. Killer is completely you know, owned by Rivet, but still have a very close partnership with Qualcomm on the hardware side. Okay. Um, so it's great. I mean, we get the best of both worlds. And I mean, we've actually tripled investment in Killer since we became a private company. We, we really think there's a great opportunity hmm. in, in you know, okay. game and performance networking. And, and that's where we're kind of at as of, as of today. All right. Um, one last just kind of update before we get to the, the product stuff is, uh, so let's just talk about Rivet Networks for a second. So Rivet, the, the management team is from, you know, either Bigfoot or Qualcomm or both, um, actually AMD also. Um, the other one is we have, we have really good engineers. So we have engineers from Intel, so guys that built a lot of the 
first set of networking products in the 90s and 2000s. We have, we have several of those guys. Um, Microsoft, so we have guys who worked on networking at Microsoft. Um, we have Polycom, actually my partner, um, who I work with a lot, is our engineering lead, and he was the C2 at Polycom before. So real-time networking, real-time video, video in general. I mean, we have lots of expertise there. And, uh, you know, we obviously think if we purpose it directly towards gaming and performance networking, we'll have a really good story. Um, but, you know, past that, just big investments. I mean, you know, we think we're being very innovative today. There's a lot of features that um, we're coming out with that no one else, I mean, I would argue no one else really being innovative in networking in general, especially on the PC side, especially on the Ethernet side. Yeah. Um, but we're making big investments, and we, we think there's a lot of room to move. So if you look at our roadmap and what we expect over the next one, two, three years, it's a lot. And I think customers will be really excited about, you know, where we're going um, in the future. Good, good. Yeah, and it's all about price performance now. We know that consumers, they value networking, but they don't want to pay a bunch of money for it. So how can we this is get, true. get them the best possible performance <laughs> they, for the money? So okay. that's where we're at today. So, I mean, if you guys look at your, your, your current product stack that we have mm -hmm. now, uh, you know, Sebastian wrote an article, a review yep. of the wireless 1535 product yep. uh, for us as well. That's just one part of what you guys have. What do you guys have lined up, either partner, product, uh, technology-wise, at this point, that somebody who's watching this stream maybe didn't know about before. Sure. So what we have right now, are our current products are the E2400, which okay. is a gigabit Ethernet controller. And I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. We also have Killer Wireless, which is a 2x2 a two two AC with multi-user MIMO and some mm -hmm. other stuff I'll talk about in a second. Um, but the other cool thing is we've, we've created new features, new innovation. You know, one is double shot of being able to use both Ethernet and wireless at the same time. Okay. And another thing that, you know, people, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, we can... In the past with our early products, there was, there was complaints about, hey, you know, this works a lot, but there's some quality issues, you know. I would say since, since we moved to gigabit Ethernet controllers, the, our whole outlook and our whole business model has changed from the fact that we went with really awesome customers. I, I show a screenshot here. You know, we're shipping in Alienware, MSI, Gigabyte, Acer, Clevo, ASRock. And quite frankly, you'll see a bunch of big announcements in the next three or four months here for, for new customers. Um, but what they've done is, again, since about five years ago, we've been shipping worldwide in millions and millions of units. So what that forced us to do and forced our, our, our partners worked with us, and, I mean, a good partner does this. They force you to get better and better and better. Right. So we think we have you know, excellent quality. We think our products are doing really good. Is there still room for improvement for features and cool stuff like that? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, we, we, we're really proud of our current product line and really excited for next year and the year after for what, what comes next. Great. Cool. So, I mean, from this, I was going to talk about the technology a little bit. Okay. Um, so, so, so networking is very interesting. So how most of the big guys do it is they say, my goal is to fit as many packets through this small pipe as possible, but I don't care if it's a gaming packet. I don't care if it's a BitTorrent. I don't care if it's a Skype packet. I don't care what it is. And by the way, apps are getting a lot more nasty in how they actually go after bandwidth. So Windows 10 is a perfect example. Yeah. I mean, automatic updates are, I mean, you got to be really, really clever to turn those things off. We talked about Steam earlier yeah. this afternoon as well. It just, it will, it'll eat up any and all available bandwidth that you have. For yes. It. I mean, and game patches are, are looking, a lot, game patches, Microsoft, all those are looking a lot more like BitTorrents, where they open up multiple yep. connections and they try to get in there as, as much as they can to take <laughs> your bandwidth. And, you know, it, it's becoming really bad for your games, quite frankly. Whenever there's contention, Basically, a standard networking product doesn't know which packet to send through, which packet to drop. So a lot of the times, it's dropping game packets. A lot of the times, it's dropping, especially video, because video is a high-throughput um, mm -hmm. piece of traffic. But so what we have is a technology called Advanced Stream Detect. What Advanced Stream Detect does is it basically is able to classify every single different packet as it comes into your PC and says exactly what is it. You know, is it a game, video, voice? Um, download, but we can get even more specific. Is it a certain game? Is it a certain type of video? Whatever it is. Hmm. So what we do there, and by the way, we do that with heuristics, not a whitelist. That's what I was going to ask. Is, are you looking at what executables are requesting that data or anything, or is you're actually looking at it from a, what the data looks like? So standard. we do a lot of stuff. We probably have 10 different things we look at, but most of it is what the data looks like. You know, what's the packet size? You know, where is it coming from? What does it look like? What things are running on the system when it happens? Okay. And we're able to do this. And, and what that means is when a new game comes out, it's not like, hey, go bug the company, go get the whitelist updated. It's, it's, hey, you know, the next game comes out, it's automatically detected, it's automatically playing good. 
and you should never worry about a game or a high priority app when you have right. a killer. Right. So again, we're detecting all this stuff and then we're prioritizing it in a way that basically creates the best possible application performance. So we care about throughput, we care about all that kind of stuff, but what we want is you bought this beautiful PC to you know play games or watch video or do certain things. We want those specific things to give you the best possible experience. The other thing we want is we don't want you to have to like, you know, first of all, I'll never convince everyone of this, but a lot of gamers, you know, they turn off everything. Yeah. They're like, this is my sanctuary of gaming. I don't want to mess with anything, <laughs> which is great. And quite frankly, I do it too. But what we want to do there is we say, hey, a lot of these internet connections are getting really big. You know, you have 100 megabits, 200 megabits, a gigabit, whatever it is. Yep. I'm from Austin, so we have Google Fiber. Yep. and We've got gigabit here. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's, it's good stuff. But are you really going to turn that whole thing off? To move your 20 kilobit game across? It seems a little bit overzealous. It's a bit overzealous, but again, people are going to do it. So I'm, the people that do it, I'm not, I have nothing against those people that are going to do it. But we want you to be able to use your entire network connection too and say, hey, look, go download, go do stuff, watch video, do Twitch in a game at the same time, stream, upload, whatever it is. We're going to make sure your game plays 100% awesome hmm. all the okay. time. Um, so that, that's really what advanced stream detect is, is detection, prioritization, and then also just, I mean, especially with uh, wireless, there's a million different settings you can do to make sure you're in the right thing. Or, you know, are you scanning for new access points? We actually tag packets so the routers know this is a high priority packet versus a low priority packet. Hmm. So we do all these other things that say, hey, look, networking's confusing, but we're gonna simplify it down to the base level where we say it's a game. When you're in game mode, here's what happens. It's a video. Here's what happens with a video. And, and we think we can offer you some really awesome performance that way. Great. Um, and what that means for performance, again, it's all about you know, latency with games. We want games to play fast. We want it to be real time. It's actually just a, a note on games is if you don't play, in, the more latency and something else they call jitter, which is kind of like the standard deviation of, of, your, of your latency, those things really can screw up how the game server even talks to you. you know, if a game server seems, sees high jitter, mm -hmm. it actually makes adjustments on its edge to try to you know, balance your performance. But what it does is it makes your game a little bit less real time when it tries to make those things. Try to make up for that gap. Kind of a buffer in there yeah. for you. Um, but we say no. We, we want to give you constant latency, very little jitter, and we want to give you, the, the, you know, that fast experience. But we also want to give you smoother video. We want to make your, you know, I have, I have kids, obviously. When I, when I travel, I try to talk to them via Skype. Mm -hmm. Skype can be a, I mean, great <laughs> tool. But when you're talking to your kids over Skype video, I mean, artifacts are everywhere. So how do you, you, know, how do you prioritize Skype to give you, you know, less jitter, less butterfly type movements on there um, and then how do we let you multitask how do we give you a better experience to take full advantage of that you know what i consider that golden pipe coming into your house which is your broadband connection how can you squeeze every last ounce of performance out of that that's what you should see as an end user with a killer product those are all amazing goals so yeah <laughs> so the goal here is to convince you all that those are those are things you need and can easily get at a at a very uh reasonable cost the other thing to note here by the way is we do this all out of the box so everything you do with Killer, it automatically, you don't have to, you know, we actually ask that you go in there and you program in your bandwidth, so your ISP settings, you say, hey, look, I have 50 and 50 down and five up, and that lets us kind of shape traffic to your specific use case. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, all of the prioritization, all of that kind of stuff happens automatically. Now, you can go in, like I talk about on this next page, you can actually go in and you can adjust settings yourself. So if you don't like what we did, you can actually go in here, and as you can see on this page, it shows you all the different apps that are running. It has a priority level t next to them, and it actually shows you how much bandwidth they're using. So as an end user, you can go in there and you say, hey, uh, those killer guys, they don't know what they're talking about. I want to change this for my perfect use case. So I can actually go in there. I can change any of the priorities of the apps. I can actually limit bandwidth per application. So I can say, hey, I never want my torrent to get more than five megabits, or I never want Windows to get more than five megabits. You can do all of that stuff with our manager, or frankly, you can even go in there and block apps. You can just say, hey, look, I don't know what this is. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm going to block <laughs> this thing completely because, I mean, who knows who's taking up your yeah, traffic these days. that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, all of that is in there. So, again, we automatically do it. So, out of the box, you don't have to worry about going in there and making a whole bunch of tweaks. But if you want to make tweaks, then, then have at it. <laughs> It's a lot of that for you. I think the type of users that we're talking to here are yep. those type that do often want <laughs> to go in there and make those changes. So not yep. having them would be would be a mistake for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, right. and the other thing for like the users here is if you think about game traffic, again, very small stream, 20, 25 kilobits. Hmm. Um, so prioritizing that 
you know, keeping that a one and then doing other things in the background, you still have, in most cases, 99% of your, your broadband connection available. Right. So it is kind of a natural, you know, your, your most important latency thing. It makes sense to put it one because not only is it not, it doesn't need performance, but it doesn't take any traffic. Right. So kind of the natural, we have actually six levels of priorities with our Ethernet products and you can, uh, yeah, go nuts on the perfect scenario for each individual customer. Great. All right. Um, Kind of moving on, so we're going to talk about two different products, like we, we mentioned in the beginning, um, Killer Wireless mm -hmm. and then Killer Ethernet. But the, the, the current Killer, we're on our second generation of 11AC card. Um, it's called the Killer Wireless AC1535, and it has what we call extreme range technology. So we went out there and did a whole bunch of customer research, and we were like, okay, what do customers care about? What do our partners care about when it comes to wireless? The first thing they care about is application performance. You know, it's funny, like the MSIs and Alienwares of the world, they get calls because of bad Wi-Fi all the time. <laughs> and, and you know, That's got to be frustrating as yeah. an OEM. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And it's, it is frustrating. And, and so, but how they see bad Wi-Fi is my Skype stinks. It's not necessarily that I can't connect all the time, but a lot of times it's the application performance. I know it's a networked app, but the app just stinks. So right. what do I do about it? The second thing is just connecting at further ranges. You know, it's, it's super frustrating in your apartment or your home when you try to connect and you just can't get a signal um, yep. or you just get really bad throughput. So what we've done is we've come up with a, a technology we call extreme range technology, which is actually the combination of you know, a few things. So then this is where Sebastian really did a lot of work. And, and, and by the way, networking is hard to test. So you know, yes. something that really impressed me with Sebastian was he like, took the time to actually understand what he was testing. Um, frankly, there's a lot of people that test networking. All they do is you know, max throughput and that's end of test. Right. Well, especially wireless networking, that's not, that's not enough. I mean, there's, there's a million different variables. There's a lot of different things going on. Um, and, and we're introducing technology to try to overcome a lot of those, those obstacles. So the first technology we have as part, you know, the first sub-technology of uh, extreme range is what we call multi-user MIMO. So multi-user MIMO is a Wave 2 11AC feature. Um, and this is kind of interesting. So how routers work today is probably going to disappoint a lot of you. Um, they basically say, hey, I see five different endpoints. I'm going to send data to endpoint one, stop. Endpoint two, stop. Endpoint three, stop. They it's can't, very serial. Yeah, very serial. Despite it's, everything else in the computer th that may work very parallel-wise, <laughs> yeah. this is a very serial transaction. Yeah, and then it, it's kind of disappointing, frankly, but it's, it's this big round robin. And two, it, two, two things, it, it, it adds latency. Because, you know, from the fact that, you know, you're going round robin across this entire group of people. But two is obviously you're not getting the maximum throughput because your router with three or four different, you know, antennas can only use one or two of them at the same time. Right. Um, what multi-user MIMO does with 11AC is, it, by the way, you need to have both an endpoint that's enabled with it and you need to have an AP or router that's enabled with it. So, you know, there's great routers like, you know, we use the Linksys E8500. There are several more coming out, but that's a great router. And what it does is it lets the the endpoints that are enabled with it can actually have multiple endpoints transmitting data to that router at the same time. So now you can use okay. all of your antennas. So if I have a two by two killer AC product, it can be using two. And if you have a one by one phone, it can be using the other one. And so you're getting multiple streams off of the same router at the same time, which gotcha. is increases your throughput by quite a bit. Okay. Now, it's still kind of doing a round robin, but there's more locations on it for those multi-user MIMO devices? Yeah, it kind of depends. So it basically can take it, like most of the multi-user MIMO now is a 4x4 router, but it can use three different multi-user, three different antennas can be used for multi-user MIMO. Okay. So it depends on how many devices you have. All three of those things can be transmitting concurrently at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you have three 1x1s, it can handle three 1x1s. Okay. But if you have five 1x1s, you're right, it's still kind of, you know... It still goes serial, but you're able to now connect three devices versus gotcha. one in the past. Gotcha. All right. So, so pretty cool stuff. But one, one of the more, I mean, there's a lot of terms and buzzwords flying around, routers and stuff. Multi-user MIMO is one of the ones that I think is extremely valuable, especially, I mean, how many different connected devices do you have in your home now? You know, it used to be I had three or four. Dozen. Now you have Dozen or 10 more. to 20. Yeah. And, and, you know, I know from working at Qualcomm and other places, they're trying to connect everything. So your washing machine, your refrigerator, it's I've all I've got coming. some of those, uh, what are those Amazon buttons called, Ken, that I can't remember, the, the dash buttons, yeah. right? You know, for toilet paper, or garbage cans, or paper towels, right? And those are Wi-Fi connected devices that just hang out there. And that's three that I named off the top of my head. Yeah, so It's going to get crazy. It'll so. only get worse. So multi or better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, absolutely. <laughs> I, I hope it's better for sure. Um, the next thing we do is we actually, so on a, every Wi-Fi chip has amplifiers on it. 
But what we did is say, hey, look, we don't want to use the standard amplifiers on the chip. So on the actual module, by the way, it's a, they've moved to an M2 connector with Wi-Fi. Mm. But what they have now is, is what we did was we added two different external amplifiers actually on the module. So this is like going from like a V4 to a V8 engine. And basically what we did was we said, I'm going to use an external power amplifier and an external low noise amplifier. So basically we can increase the you know, how we get the signal coming in, and we can also push signal further. So this is something we talked about, not getting connections in certain places in the home. This is a great technology for that. Push the signal further, get better connections. But what we see is basically at range, you see up to, you know, sometimes between 20, 25, 30% extra throughput at these longer ranges. And I'll show you some data in a second, but okay. it's impressive. Last big thing from extreme range is uh, transmit beamforming. Transmit beamforming actually lets your router and your endpoint kind of talk to each other give coordinated information, stuff like that, so the router can actually push signal in a certain direction. Huh. So it's pretty cool. So it says, you know, hey, look, if I have, if I know there's two endpoints on this side of my house, I'm going to do my best to actually have all my waves, you know, optimally go in one direction so I can actually make the signal go further, and you're able to actually get, again, better signal, better around people, all that kind of different right. stuff. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. So, so moving on here. The other thing, just to kind of mention, in this slide, if you can show it real quick, it, it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of an eye chart, but I, I, I kind of <laughs> want to bring it out from one perspective. We have a lot of features and a lot of innovation that we think we're doing that nobody else does. So, for example, extreme range, we have lag and latency reduction technology, obviously to reduce lag, advanced dream detect, which is detection prioritization. We automatically do all this for you. We let the user customize. We let the user set from priorities and bandwidth. We actually have cloud support, so you can go there, and if, if there's any new rules or something we need to have you download real quick, you can do that via this uh, you know, push for update button. We have a Wi-Fi analyzer actually now that shows you all the different access points in your home, you know, what's going on there. So a user can literally walk around with their PC and be like, oh, this is a clean area of my home to sit down in, huh. or this one has you know, noise up the wazoo and <laughs> I can't do anything here. And then lastly, Double Shot Pro is kind of you know, the next big thing, which lets you... Uh, you know, use, take advantage of two killer network interfaces on the same PC. Okay. Okay, moving along here. So this is just some performance data. Um, so this is an office environment. Um, but basically what it shows you is you see transmit and you see receive and you see killer and then basically you see an Intel 7265. That's the competition. And what you see is in close range, we're relatively close. You know, we have a little bit of an advantage, maybe, you know, five to 15 megabits. But as you move further and further away, the, our advantage with those, you know, again, multi-user MIMO and the external amplifiers, all that stuff really starts to take effect. And you can see at 25 meters, which, by the way, meters and Wi-Fi kind of equal walls and a bunch of other stuff, too. You know, <laughs> obstacles are kind of like distance in some weird way. Yeah, um, yeah. It's funny, though, but by country, you know, we, we talked about there's some people in Europe. You know, in Europe, they have real brick walls. <clears throat> those are very, very different than the average drywall in the mm -hmm. United States. So. Generally, signal travels a little further in U.S. homes because they're built cheaply in some sense. And in other countries, you know, you'd really need that extra power to get through some of those thicker, yeah. you know, more dense walls. Makes sense. Um, but again, at, at 25 meters, we're showing 25 to 43% more uh, throughput. And as you notice, we don't drop very much. So at 5 meters, we're at 694 megabits for receive. And at 25 meters, we're at 690. I mean, you're not losing much performance at all over distance um, with uh, the extreme range technology. Okay. Okay, and this one is a quick, uh, and this is what, again, Sebastian did a great job here testing multi-user MIMO. This is what we see in our lab. Basically, if you have a two-by-two two killer endpoint and you have a one-by-one one, you know, phone or something like that, you, we, we showed you got 711 megabits both connected to the router at the same time. Um, if you do that same thing without multi-user MIMO, you only got 446. So this was kind of like, you know, in one, they're going round robin, and the other one, they're both being, have data pushed to them concurrently. So the theoretical kind of advantage for multi-user MIMO is around 60, 65%. It can certainly be more based on the, the use case. But in this case, you know, we say a pretty good estimation of how much you're going to get with multi-user MIMO in this scenario is 60% extra usable throughput by using these devices. Now, how does having more uh, non-MU MIMO devices on your network kind of affect that? So what it basically does is, and that's an interesting question, because you basically go out of multi-user MIMO mode when you hit a non-multi-user MIMO device. So it goes, it goes serial, serial, but then it, whenever it hits the multiple MU MIMO devices, it can handle them both at the same time. Okay. So any multi-user MIMO devices in your house makes a benefit, even if you have a bunch of old devices that aren't multi-user MIMO supported. Okay. 
but it does lessen it. So yeah, the more multi-user MIMO devices you can put in your house, clearly the better for your overall network gotcha. performance. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, keep going here. So this was Sebastian. You know, again, we, we were impressed by Sebastian. Man, it's too bad he's not here on the stream. He's, yeah. he's getting all the love. <laughs> he's getting some shout outs. <laughs> um, but again, this is hard to review. So, you know, a lot of times when you see reviews that just say, hey, look, I tested max throughput and max CPU um, with networking, that's only part of the story. So, you know, he tested multi-user MIMO. He actually saw a little bit better than we usually see. He saw right around 100%, um, which is great. And then we also do a multitasking test, which we'll explain a little bit more later. But, you know, hey, I'm playing a game and I'm doing something else at the same time. Right. How does latency get impacted by killer versus another one? You know, and in his case, it went up, you know, nine milliseconds, which is actually a little higher than we usually see, but in the realm of what we see. Um, with an Intel card, it went from 35 to 721. Again, because it doesn't know which packets to drop and That's you have to lot. retransmit and yeah. stuff like that. But anyway, he, he was impressed. Um, but again, I, I, we were impressed by him from the fact that he did a really good job of understanding the technology and, and really digging in to see what the advantages were. Cool. Okay, so that's the wireless product. Going on to, uh, we have a killer Ethernet solution too. So this came as part of Rivet. Um, we launched it um, just a few months ago, actually. But it's the killer E2400 with uh, Advanced Stream Detect 2.0. And when we say advanced stream detect 2.0, the main advantage there is, is we've gotten better at detection. And this is something you'll see over time. But, you know, we currently detected network applications. So, you know, Chrome is one, World of Warcraft's one, Skype is one. But there's points where the actual, what's happening inside of the browser, mm -hmm. they're different priorities, right? So our argument, which I think everyone would agree with, is Twitch is very important. Box.net is not very important or not very urgent. It's important. It just isn't real time. Right. So what we've done is we've actually started identifying the specific websites and prioritizing your browser differently based on what the active website is on your your specific browser. Is so, it is it intelligent enough to do it like on a per tab basis inside Chrome or something like that? No. So now it does it by actual browser. Okay. But what you're talking about, I'm just telling you that that should. I can't make any product announcements, but you should. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you will see stuff like that coming. Okay. Um, so again, this was the first step. It's by browser. In the future, we will get even smarter than okay. by browser. Okay. It's actually interesting. You can go. There's lots of different ways to sort this. You can go by tab. You can actually go by connection because if you actually look at like Inside, a YouTube, it's, yeah. There's a video. There's a voice, which makes sense. But then there's all the ads, all the other stuff. There's mm -hmm. plugins. So a lot yeah. of that stuff can be managed in an optimal way. Interesting. Okay. Um, this is just a quick example here. This is probably hard to see, but as you look on there, you know, we actually inside of Google Chrome, you can see it's a, a Twitch, and then in Explorer, you see it's box.net. One we prioritize if, for, for web, we basically say all important web traffic is priority three, and all non important web traffic is five, and then kind of standard web traffic is four. So it automatically moves those back and forth hmm. per you know what you're doing. All right. Um, you know, moving and you on. can change all that, which we'll we'll talk yeah, about. Yeah, all of that you well. can go in there and actually okay. change. The other cool part about this is, you know, there's the killer, you know, E2400, same type thing as I won't bug you with the slide here too much, but a lot of different features. Again, we're being innovative on Ethernet. We think gamers care about Ethernet, and I, I, think, I think a lot so. of people would agree there. Yeah. And there's a lot of cool stuff yet to be done, um, but a lot of people just aren't innovating in Ethernet. They kind of consider it a market that, you know, isn't going to grow, is the size it is, but we think, hey, gamers really care about it, so there's a lot of extra value we can add, um, and especially at a premium that basically no longer exists. So good story there. Um, so the other thing we look at a lot is video. So videos are really, I mean, I can't stand when video freezes, right? There's an emotional reaction that happens when you're watching a YouTube and your video freezes. Netflix is better, but what happens with Netflix is they lower resolution. It's right. dynamic. So it's like, hey, look, there's two big pixels at some point that are my Netflix. But again, <laughs> what we do is we say, hey, look, again, the video is going to be prioritized and protected, and everything else gets traffic as there's traffic available for it. So we basically do something with the E2400 versus the competition. Um, and, and what you see here is we watch it. Can you say who this competitor is? This is an Intel um, NIC right here. Okay. But it could be anybody's NIC. It could actually be the current, our current NIC with killer turned off. Okay. It just doesn't, the, the really expensive part is when packets get dropped, then there's retransmissions and all this stuff involved. If we make sure video and gaming packets never get dropped and are always handled correctly, we're just never going to freeze. But if someone else isn't doing that and there's any contention in the network, hmm. things are going to go okay. bad. Right. So this is basically a, a Windows, this is a Windows update with a, a 1080p movie. 
Um, and you see the killer card doesn't freeze and you watch a two minute, 26 second video in two minutes and 26 seconds, which you'd like to think that was good. And the comp competitor basically, which is Intel in this case, freezes eight times and you watch it in three minutes and 50 seconds. Um, which, which freezes, some freezes aren't that bad. You know, some take half a second, but some take 30 seconds. So right. we, the reason we put total time here is because we want to get the full impact of Whatever the Whatever the buffer time is and all that, so. Yep. Um, hmm. And just for everyone looking for some independent third-party research is we did have a review of this done by the tech report of mm -hmm. the E2400. Um, basically what they saw here is, well, let's put it in perspective here. Gigabit Ethernet controllers go gigabit. You know, we're no different. So sometimes we win, win reviews by two megabits, sometimes we lose, but it's just external factors. I mean, they all go a gigabit. I mean, Realtek, Intel, Broadcom, we all go a gigabit. Right. Now, what we try to be really good at is one, you see on the, the upper left here, is we care about small files. So we want to do really good at small packets because small packets are gaming packets, right? So you see here, we're actually better in throughput tests with small packets. Um, we're six or seven percent better than, you know, the Intel, latest Intel Ethernet chip. So that, that's good. So on a throughput, my view is we're either equal or a little bit better when it comes to certain size packets. Now, when it comes to latency, that's where we really should should shine. So as you see here, you know, we had, this is in microseconds, so you're getting into the tiny numbers, but we're about three times faster than an Intel controller when it comes to packet handling okay. and, and latency, basically system generated latency. Uh, now, the network has a lot of variables in it, right? You have your router, you have your ISP, you have the game server. We do tag packets to make sure that, you know, basically if there's any contention at a network point and they look at something called DSCP bits, they actually take our packet first because we've marked a gaming packet hmm. as high priority. Okay. Um, but this, what we're measuring right here is just system latency. How fast does it take to get that packet out of your computer? And, you know, we think we do a pretty good job of this. All right. Okay. So that was some external validation for everyone. Um, I guess to keep going here, so the other thing we did is, you know, we looked at this and we're like, where can we innovate and, and add value? And you have wireless, you have Ethernet on the same system, okay? Most of the time, right? Yeah, and, and especially any notebook basically does, and, and, and more and more of the motherboards are starting to show that. And so we said, hey, look, what can we do to give customers extra value when they have two killer interfaces on the same system? So we came up with a technology called Killer Double Shot Pro. What Killer Double Shot Pro but by the way, this works with any of our gigabit Ethernet, any of our wireless cards. So if you have an older one or a newer one or whatever combination you have mm -hmm. of, the, of the gigabit Ethernet controllers and the Wi-Fi cards, this will work on. Okay. Um, but what we do here is we, we have three major things that I would say we do. Is, is first thing is we do smart pass selection. We, this isn't like traditional teaming where it's kind of like a, a failover type thing. We take a network process and we allocate it to a specific interface. So we say, hey, game, Ethernet's usually faster. You should go over that because it, you care about latency and Ethernet has the lowest latency. So all priority one traffic, we generally send over the fastest interface that you have. And we have some, some things we do to make sure it's, you know, if it's an underperforming link, we have data that comes back to us and says, hey, look, you don't want it to go over Ethernet right now because <laughs> Ethernet's having a lot of problems, especially like 10, 100 links. Um, you don't want Ethernet going over those. Now, so all of priority one is going over this, and all your other other traffic is going over your second killer interface. So you're saying, hey, look, my downloads, my Microsoft updates, all my emails, all those are going over Wi-Fi because you know if they get there, you know, a millisecond slower, nobody cares. But if you slow down your Wi-Fi, that's a or slow down your your game, that's obviously a problem. So the first thing we do is we pick which path it's going to in the most intelligent way possible. The second thing we let you do is we actually let you connect to two different broadband networks at the same time. So we can say, hey, look, you're going to game on your home broadband, but I also have, you know, either a phone. You know, United States is not a great place for phone data because it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of countries where it's not. Um, so, you know, a lot of places, especially in Asia, they hook up to their phone and they say, hey, I'm going to use this for Wi-Fi because um, it doesn't cost me much. The other thing that's happening a lot in Austin, especially in a lot of other places in the United States, is they're actually getting more public Wi-Fi. So you can hook a... You know, I have Time Warner cable in, the, I forget how many hotspots they have in the United States, but it's hundreds of thousands where you can hook up to public Wi-Fi in your urban neighborhood and do a, use your broadband connection at the same time. So at this point, you're getting double the bandwidth in a lot of situations. Okay. Um, you're getting, it could be your neighbor, it could be whoever else you got, but you're taking bandwidth from two different sources all into your computer. And I'd argue that's the most valuable use of, you know, from a throughput perspective, because, you know, moving data around your house is nice and we all like that. 
but actually getting double the ISP bandwidth in, you know, the real bandwidth, the real bytes from the outside world into your house right. is, is obviously super important. Sure. So that's kind of the second thing. The third thing is we can actually increase just your, obviously your max throughput. If you have killer ethernet and killer Wi-Fi working at the same time, you know, one's gigabit, one's 867 megabits with, with wireless. Both of those can work at the same time. And we generally, with that, we get about 1.6 gigabits of actual real-world performance throughput. Hmm. Um, now, you can use that not just for going out through your internet connection, but for internal yeah. traffic in yeah. your house, too. Like, if you have uh, a NAS device or you're streaming video to, you know, dummy machines or deadhead machines or something like that, that could all be utilized from that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's a, that's a great use case. Is a lot of times what we think is one hits the broadband network and one might be for, you know, streaming mm -hmm. media throughout your house or something mm -hmm. like that. But it, it does, and it, it does, though, just as a, a note, it does require, in most cases, you hook up to two different other devices because most devices are gigabit. And so we need to hook up to two because we're actually pumping out more than a gigabit worth of data. Right. So, you know, in, in a lot of examples, we have one going to one PC and one going to a NAS or a different device inside of your home. Right. Um, but yeah, you're able to, I mean, you're able to use all that. But again, just another example, at least what we think is an example of trying to be innovative in a world that, you know, frankly doesn't get much innovation is what are, you know, detection is very key, but how, you know, the more granular we can manage your traffic and do smart things with it, the better user experience that we can create for right. people. So yeah, so that's, that's that's big for us. So that's double shot. Um, this is what double shot looks like, by the way. It basically shows on Ethernet is red, so we actually color code the UI for you. We say, hey, look, all the traffic that's red is Ethernet. All the traffic that's blue is Wi-Fi. And then, frankly, you as an end user can go in there and actually change which you know basically all priority ones going over Ethernet. So if you want something else to go over Ethernet that's currently on Wi-Fi, you just go in there and change it to a priority one, and you've actually adjusted which interface that your traffic is going to for that specific app. Hmm. Seems pretty simple. Yeah, no, it, and it all happens automatically. But again, you want to tweak it. You know, there's something that you think you know is important to you. That's certainly something that we we very much recommend that you do as an end user. All right. Um, one last shot. One last slide on double shot here. This is actually called X3. There's a. <laughs> this is cool. There's so there's a. Clevo, who, who sells through Origin and a lot of people like that, who, who are very, you know, all those are very innovative companies. They actually put two killer Ethernet controllers and one killer Wi-Fi on their notebooks. And Gigabyte has a gaming G1 with the same thing. Um, but it's just that much better, right? Now we send in all priority one traffic over Ethernet. We can send, you know, over your second link, we send parties two, three, four, five, and party six goes over your third. So you're basically, I mean, you have very protected traffic from all the other things out there. Um, but again, if you're going to put dual NICs on there, why not use dual NICs? So it's just another way for us to take advantage of the hardware with an extra feature. How much of this, I mean, it really depends on what your outbound connection is a lot of times, right? So, I mean, like, even us here, and you're mm -hmm. talking about having Google Fiber, we have a gigabit connection. Sure. If I hooked up two gigabit Ethernet ports from a machine... Unless we're doing a lot of external traffic and then a lot of internal traffic, is there a real benefit to having both NICs really connected at the same time? That would I mean the biggest benefit would be what you just said. The other one is it is faster when when one's Ethernet and one's Wi-Fi. Yeah. You do like to have your highest priority packets delivered via Ethernet because they're going to basically beat your other packets to the router. Okay. So even if Killer is smart about what's happening on your PC, we're going to try to you know, rig the system where the router is getting the most important packets first. Okay. And you just kind of sort things out that way. Because a lot of times, you know, if we're delivering things as fast as they can to the router, you, you can lose stuff in the router. And we don't want to lose anything in the router. We want the router to react as intelligently as possible to what we're giving it. And in this case, giving it the gaming packets first is a, okay. just a good idea in general. But, okay. But anyway, so the, the next thing I'd like to do is, is we, we filmed this a little bit before just because networking is... Yeah, so we're gonna is. do uh, we're gonna do a demo, uh, a playback, a video recorded of a demo. Uh, what was what's the feature where uh, it's, it's, uh, it, the name escaped me? The advanced again. stream detect. Advanced stream detect. Uh, now it's a recording, but we recorded it today. Yep. Like literally an hour and a half yep. ago, maybe two hours ago, uh, after you got here and we set it all up. Um, only because uh, in real time demos with networking, especially stuff involving wired or not, uh, you'll you'll have some. Some questionable results, I guess. Yeah. So we set it up and made sure it all worked correctly. So we'll play back that video. Uh, but before we get to that, I do want to have another reminder here. We are giving away an Alienware 13 R2 laptop, mm -hmm. uh, just like one of these two 
uh, smaller versions that we have here. Uh, this is a uh, I think this is Skylake based. Yes, that's Skylake. It's a Skylake based processor, yep. GTX 960M, mm -hmm. uh, Killer 1535. Yep, and E2400. And the E2400 in there. Uh, MSRP of like just under $1,000. The URL is on the screen that you see there, pcper.com slash killer contest. Uh, go there and sign up and uh, enter in for all your information. Enter in the necessary information, whatever it says to enter in on the form. Make sure you do that. And we'll give this away at the, uh, at the end of the stream as well. Uh, so it looks like we've got we've got everything queued up over there to play this back. So, sure. all right, go ahead so and play it. Take it away. Okay, so what's the first demo we're going to take a look at here? What's the uh, what's the process or what's the demonstration here? What we're going to do is show you advanced stream detect like we talked about before. So what advanced stream detect again does is it detects all the different applications running on your network or on your computer, and it basically says, hey, here's how I'm going to treat them differently to make sure that you have the optimal performance for your PC. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I have a game. You can see that. And I'm using Team Fortress 2. And the nice part about Team Fortress 2 is it has a real-time latency meter in the, in, the, in the corner here. So right now I'm kind of circling around there. It's around, you know, it's been jumping somewhere between 35 and maybe 45 milliseconds. And then I'm going to have, I have a YouTube over here. So we're going to play YouTube. And then I have BitTorrent to just show you background traffic. Now, there's BitTorrents, obviously, but things like Windows updates now, you know, automatically happen. So Windows right. 10 is, is pretty nasty from a a bandwidth perspective. So we're going to go in here, see applications. You can see, look, the Half-Life 2 engine is what I've, I've recognized. And so that's running right now. Now, the interesting part about a game is a game only takes between 10 and 20 kilobits at a time in most cases. So a game is actually a really small stream. So for all those people that have, you know, 100 megabit plus internet connections, your game is only taking up that little piece, but it's real-time traffic. So it's very, very important. You don't want anything messing with it. And again, Killer will prioritize it and make sure it gets delivered in a way where your latency will have, you know, no impact from other stuff. Okay. So what I'll do here, again, and, and the other thing to mention here is we're on an 11.4 internet connection. So this is kind of the average in the United States per Akamai. Okay. This absolutely works with bigger network connections too, but this is a good way to show you what the average person in the United States would be feeling. Okay. This seems reasonable. Okay, so there you see, it's already jumping right now, but somewhere in, uh, right now, 45 to 50, but let's kind of go through here. So you're at 45 to 50 from a, let's go up. So I'm gonna start a couple bit torrents here. Let's go here. And you can see right now, I've forced all the bit torrents to get going. And you know, the bit torrents, you see them right there on the bottom, they start taking traffic instantly. Right. And you know, there's a lot of traffic, there's a lot of new connections, a lot of stuff going on here. And then what I'll do over here in the corner is I'll start over a YouTube video. Gotcha. So this is YouTube. So this is, you know, we're gonna go to a 1080p YouTube. Let's get this guy moving. And what you hopefully see here is right now, I have a lot of stuff going on. You can see, let's sort these all by download. So the YouTube's starting to come in there. Everything's detecting. So you see right now the YouTube is now taking away bandwidth from the BitTorrent, which makes sense because right. you care about the immersive experience of a, of a YouTube. The other thing you see here is the latency of the game is still around that 35, 45 milliseconds. It might pop up a little bit, but now we've classified everything correctly. So if you kind of look at this, you got the YouTube taking the majority of the traffic, but the game is actually prioritized one. So it's getting that 10 to 10, 20 kilobits it needs. That's and then good. the BitTorrent gets whatever's left over. So when you go out there and you buy your 100 megabit connection, you can now use every single ounce of that connection and still get a great performance with whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, now, let's do the, what happens when killer is not involved. So you basically go here to settings, you turn off advanced stream detect, or, yep, there you go. It'll take a second here, but now, not, like that last screen I showed you, we've turned everything off. Right. We go out here. You look at the latency of the game. The game is now around you know, 66, 65, 60. Let's actually get it better up here. Excuse me. So you're at 78, 77. So you've added somewhere between, now you're going up even higher than that, somewhere between you know, 30 and 50 huh. milliseconds worth of latency or ping right. has been added to your game. You look over here, the video is having all sorts of problems, right? Yeah, go ahead and uh, hit, the, hit the unpause button there on the, on the video. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's, it, is, it, it should be completely it's, good. Yeah, it's... You can't even do anything right now. Because right. what's happening is the BitTorrent, with all of its different connections, is absolutely killing the video right now. So that's the huh. video, how it will go. And if, if I turn this off, by the way, in a second, it should go right back. But what you see is the normal network card, and this is basically what I've turned it into by turning Killer off. It has no idea what's a BitTorrent packet, what's a YouTube packet, what's a gaming packet. So when it has to make a decision on what packet to drop, it doesn't know if it should drop the gaming packet, the video packet, whatever it is. Hmm. With Killer, we absolutely know what each packet is, and we make sure that you get the, the optimal experience. Okay. Um, now let's go back and turn Killer back on for a second. 
hopefully we don't lose any of the connections here, but you go there, apply changes. So what you should see very, very quickly, let's get back to here, let's get to here. So you start to see the, it'll take a second here, but the YouTube's gonna start coming back, right? So the YouTube oh, just yeah. started playing again, and what it's doing is it's starting to steal that bandwidth back from the BitTorrent. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds. And then the other thing you see here is the game latency is back in the 30s or 40s. Huh. So that's just the difference between killer on, killer off, knowing now which application joins. Too. Now the video is going to play all the way through, no problem whatsoever. So that's all just enabled through enabling the killer network software in the driver itself. Yes. No. So there's there's two things there. There's the driver, and then you know through our close partnership with Qualcomm, we have you know a lot of input, a lot of control over the registers, the priority queues on the hardware. Hmm. So you know through using hardware and through using the killer software, you're able to get those benefits. There are other software only you know kind of QoS applications out there, but we don't think they're able, and we've tested them. They're not able to get the same performance hmm. because they're not having hardware and software work together for the optimal solution. Okay, pretty cool. Yep. So that's the advanced stream to tech demo. Thanks. All right, there you go. Um, I, I actually found that that demonstration to be the most telling reason why somebody should care about the technology, right? The product, the technology in general, the fact that uh, just doing something that I think many of our viewers and readers actually do, you know, you have a torrent going, okay, and now you're going to play a game, and it can drastically affect mm -hmm. what that experience is, right? Um, is it is it is it reasonable to say that like multi users on the same network would have a similar effect? And how does this kind of roll into that with knowing that this is like a client side? type application. Yeah, so there's there's a couple of things there. One is, you know, we can't control all the different things happening around you, but we do a couple of things to to make it better. So, for example, you first of all, you're going to in and out of your system faster no matter what. So, we're we're very good at that lower latency, more control. The other thing we do is we do tag the packets. So, again, when multiple systems are all hitting that router at the same time, mm -hmm. they're going to identify game packets from us and other certain things as the highest priority, and your router can react in the right way. So, again, we don't have full control of the router, but we do everything we possibly can to let it know that this type of packet is most important for it to process. Okay. All right, now did you want to walk through a couple of other things, either uh, uh, a walkthrough of the interface or... Yeah, let me just show you guys, and you guys saw some of this in the, the demo we were just looking at, but, I mean, it is pretty... You know, cool. So you basically see here that these are all the different apps running. And, and the thing to note here, let's is, see. But if we, what are we? Okay, we need to switch back to the other, uh, the the mirrored version, Windows P, again. Yep. Sorry, guys. We got to duplicate. Yep. Got it. There you go. All right. Now we're on top. So, so the, the the thing to note. There's a couple things to note here. One is you're you're connected to everything's connected on your PC now. A lot of people think when they're gaming, they're only gaming. That's generally not true. You have Windows 10 in the background, but then you have a whole host of other Windows processes, Adobe Update, email. You know, a lot of people are really good at turning those things off, but you can kind of look, I have Microsoft OneDrive, PowerPoint, NVIDIA. Um, I mean, we're just Skype, Steam, all of this stuff, I have TeamViewer, all of these things have open network connections that are basically going off after the bandwidth on your thing. Um, of your system. The other thing to note is, you know, we do have the ability to be able to prioritize. You see one through six here. so. Mention that you have the priority to block any different app that's running, and then you do have the ability to go back and forth and basically limit bandwidth per application. So again, you're getting all these extra features, all this extra performance um, as part of the system. Again, automatically happens for you, but then you know you have full control. And again, I, I would argue you're getting a lot of bang for the buck right here, as this is it basically component pricing. All of this comes with the killer solution, all beneficial. And I agree with what you were saying before the. The multitasking is good, but it's also, you know, it's also kind of peace of mind of whenever there's a moment where there's contention, killer will make the right decision, always. Whenever you're looking at, you know, how fast you can process packets, mm -hmm. we're always going to be the fastest. So you have these advantages just whenever you know, your, your network need, or your game needs it or your YouTube needs it or whatever it is, we're always going to make the best decision for you, give you the best performance. And again, we're going to do so at a... Uh, a non-existent premium to you know what we've done in the past. So, okay. a lot of cool stuff there. Uh, can I go back to? No, you can just leave it like that. Like actually, that? if you okay. want, I think. Okay. There you go. Um, so I'm looking forward to questions. But at the end of the day, I mean, what, what I, we came in here to basically talk about was, you know, I think we've made huge strides. We came in at a $279 network card. 
Um, you know, five or six years ago, there was some quality issues. We're open and upfront about it. We've worked with great partners. We've made great strides. We really improved everything. We think we have a, a best-in-class product, basically. We do not think there's a better networking solution in the planet right now. Um, it's all about application performance. I, I, you know, whether you win max throughput test by two megabits or not, it's in the noise. Whether your game plays fast, your video runs smoothly, your Skype's good, that's what we think users care a lot about. It's really been a fundamental shift in how people care about performance uh, on PCs in general mm -hmm. over, I'd say, the last two to three years. And it's not so much on, on, on GPUs, we see the same thing. Are you winning by three frames per second, four frames per second? Nobody really cares about that anymore. Is your, game pay, is your gameplay smooth? Are the frames consistently delivered? Is it a, is it a better user experience as opposed to are, is your number a little bit higher or lower yeah. than the competition? We see that on GPUs, we've seen that on processors, we've seen that on storage, and, and on networking, it seems to be just as important, especially the more wireless devices we connect everything, the higher our bandwidth allocation becomes, at least you know, sure. in certain parts of the of world where that's an option. Um, the other so, thing to add there, could be interesting. Yeah, the other thing to add there is like, you know, you buy this beautiful processor, you buy this great NVIDIA or AMD graphics card, right? You buy this memory. And, and a lot of times networking is a complete afterthought. Yeah. But networking is feeding, I mean, it's, it's the source for all of those things to basically give you that real time, that great experience. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yes, is this ever going to be like a higher line item than a graphics card or a processor? No, absolutely not. But is it something you should think about when you kind of want your system to perform well at all times? We think networking is a, a very low cost upgrade, a lot of times a no cost upgrade to getting that you know really good and ensuring you have a really good performance. So it brings up an interesting question. Um, where can people buy these products, right? I've actually, we've had a couple of people ask, hey, do they make add-in cards for this? And I was like, well, not anymore, they yep. don't. So I mean, we don't have to go back to the slide that showed the list of partners, but mm -hmm. you guys sell essentially in notebooks and motherboards yep. at this point, yep. right? From, and who are your, like I know on MSI motherboards and notebooks, we've got Alienware yep. uh, notebooks. Gigabyte. You have uh, Acer. Acer just launched a really cool line of Predator notebooks. Um, Clevo. You have Asrock. Um, and you're gonna see, I can't announce them now, but you're going to see a lot more. I mean, yeah. and the other kind of cool thing about this is, you know, Intel, I'll just be completely honest. Intel has a huge brand name, a huge marketing budget. You know, with people just default a lot of times to Intel. Mm -hmm. But like these guys would never go with killer like the msis and the alien warriors of the world the only reason they go with us ever is because we win performance tests in in their labs yeah. with their people watching you don't pick killer by default you pick killer because it proved itself at one of the partners so when you see us shipping with these guys it's not like hey look i just chose killer it's i benchmarked everything and killer came out to be the best solution but to your earlier question a lot of motherboards a lot of notebooks um no adding cards unfortunately um <laughs> Frankly, no, even you can't buy the Wi-Fi modules. The M.2. The M.2s, we only sell those in notebooks. There's a lot of regulatory issues with Wi-Fi these days. The mm -hmm. FCC is really, really strict on what they do. So unfortunately, the only way to get them is as part of this. The good news is, for a lot less than you could usually, you could have bought a killer product like four years ago. Right. You could actually buy a motherboard with killer on it. And get <laughs> That's the true. The very first too. killer card was 279 yeah, You could buy a really nice motherboard. You could buy a really good motherboard <laughs> for 279 Absolutely. Another way to get it is obviously to win one for yes. free. That's uh, the, best way. the Alienware 13R2 uh, device we still have. Uh, we're going to give it away here. I'm going to give you one last chance to really enter in uh, for the contest. We'll answer a couple of questions and we'll do the drawing in just a handful of minutes. So PCPart.com slash killer contest. Go there, fill out the form. Uh, and uh, you'll be entered there. We'll, we'll run through some questions here. Yep. Uh, first question that I just happen to see is, any plans for like 10 gig type stuff? 10 gig is very interesting. We, so there, we are definitely looking at 10 gig. Um, so the reason you're, you're gonna see, just as in my opinion, I came from, by the way, I did the smart gateways were what I managed at Qualcomm when I was there. Okay. Killer and smart gateways. You're gonna see the, 2.5, 5, and 10 gigabit stuff come first to routers because the Wi-Fi is getting so fast that you need more than a gigabit port, right? right. Um, but we're looking right, actively looking right now at taking those technologies and adding them to a PC. Um, there, there's a lot of debate whether it's really 2.5, 5, or 10 is kind of like the, the price performance um, winner of that. Um, but you're going to see something. I think it's going. I think I don't think it's going to be in 2016. But my hope is in 2017 you start to see the it really come out as a good solution. But again, we have lots of stuff in our lab right now. And when we think it's ready for the prime time, we will absolutely want to be the leaders on that too. Cool. Uh, K 
KC5 VDJ, I don't know, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that in anything, wants to know any plans for Linux BSD driver support on these devices? Yeah, so you should have Linux driver support on both of these driver, these devices. So, okay. so if you go to killernetworking.com, there's a knowledge base, and it tells you how to uh, down, get the Linux drivers for both mm -hmm. Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Um, I would, if you ever have any problems with that stuff, by the way, for everyone, it's killer support at rivetnetworks.com. Those guys are really good. We monitor email all the time, but we should have working Linux drivers for both. Again, if you have any problems, give us a shout. All right. Uh, this is an interesting one. Can your software prioritize SSL traffic? So SSL traffic's a little, we, we can prioritize the, the connection basically, or the, the app that's doing it. Okay. So if we say, you know, this thing's doing SSL, then we'll prioritize that app specifically. So it's like if part of Chrome is doing it, then sure, we'll prioritize Chrome in a certain way, which will include the SSL. Um, things that we don't do, by the way, though, are like, you know, if you have a, if you have an, not, not an FTP, but if you get a VPN, for example, mm -hmm. like we can't manage everything separately inside of that actual sure. VPN connection. We see it basically as a VPN connection, and you can manage the VPN in a certain way, but not all the applications inside of it. Okay, makes sense. Um, <clears throat> is there a method to control TCP connection count or packets per second? Can you get down to that kind of granularity? Oh, not, not in today's product. You can certainly control bandwidth per application, is something we talked about, but we do not go down to that level right now of, uh, of, okay. of customization. Perth wants to know if you have any thoughts or plans to roll this technology into a router to provide these features network-wide. So here, here's the interesting part, and this is just all honesty, is this is what we were doing at Bigfoot, is we we're going to come out with a killer router, and we were going to, it yep. was going to be awesome. Yep. Um, Qualcomm has a technology there. I'll be honest, we look at routers all the time. If you actually think about it, we think there's a lot of improvement to be made on endpoints, and we're obviously investing heavily on that, but we also think there's a lot of improvement to be made on on routers. I mean, routers are kind of the traffic cop for all of your devices, right. so we have no plans at the moment, but it's always something that... Uh, definitely catches our attention and, and we continue to, to look at all the time. Is that something that would even be possible? I mean, could you just apply the whole thing to? No, it's very, very different. I mean, the nice part of the awesome, the best part about a PC is I know every single thing happening on this PC. So I, I can optimize fantastically. Mm. On the router, basically what you're trying to do and what this, our technology that we brought to Qualcomm called StreamBoost did is it did heuristics on a router level. We looked at like all these different, you know, packet sizes. We looked at gaps, we looked at everything, and we said, this is YouTube, this is Netflix, but it was, it was basically a form of uh, half DPI, half uh, kind of heuristics-based detection. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, but it, it's pretty good. So by the way, I would argue that if anyone wants to go out there, there's a, like a Netgear R7500 has Stream Boost in it, and there's, a, there's several other products that are coming out with it. Um, it's really cool. Um, take a look at that first, but we do agree. I think the router is a great place to potentially go in the future. Um... How many of these features are software updates? Uh, he says he already has a killer product on an Alienware 15. Sure. Is, is the software, like the new profiling systems and stuff, is that just part of new software updates if you have an older yeah. piece of killer hardware? So, again, there, there was a big separation between the old... We had a Freescale network processor in the old ones. So once we went to Gigabit Ethernet controllers and Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. the software should be good. So if you go to killernetworking.com, you go to the driver download section... Um, I think it's under support, you'll absolutely be able to get the software. One of the things that we think is a huge value is as we come out with new features, we don't always make them new products. We just give the features back. So it, we're, we're always innovating on the software side. And the nice part is we're actually kind of innovating on both because we know what other features to take advantage of on the hardware. And over time, we continue to get better and better of taking advantage of those features. But yeah, if you have an Alienware 15, go download the latest software and uh, enjoy. All right, I think that's going to be it, guys. If you haven't entered for uh, the contest yet, that's your fault. <laughs> uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and draw this winner here so that I can... We can get this out of the way. So this is an awesome prize. I really thank you. Thank the thank folks at Alienware for, uh, for bringing it with you. I didn't know if we were actually going to get it here as a prop to use. I don't no, it's right there. To, that's the real deal. We just have to promise people yeah. that we actually had one to give away. Uh, so the winner is... Walid S. I won't give the full last name. Who answered the first question as advanced stream detection? Um, who I think may may live in the coolest city name in Minnesota that I've ever heard. Excelsior. 
Excellent. I'm from Apple Valley. I went to Apple Valley <laughs> High School in Minnesota, everybody. So congratulations. While Excelsior, we... Minnesota. Good for you. Uh, that is an amazing location. I'll have to find out where that is. <laughs> uh, so congratulations, Waleed. You won the Alienware 13R2. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody, uh, for hanging out in the live stream. We definitely appreciate it. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, a lot of fun. Enjoy your out. system. This was a, it's a great system. So enjoy. And thanks really, for spending time with us. Really appreciate it. If you guys have any more questions, if you want to go to uh, the, the Killer Networking Rivet Networks post on PCPro.com and leave them in the comments there, I'll direct them to him after the fact. Uh, and if they can get to it, that would be awesome. Uh, otherwise, you know, keep hitting up PCPro.com. We'll have more reviews of products using their, their networking devices relatively soon. We've still got that MSI GT72S. Perfect. With the GTX 980 in there to take a look at as well. Uh, and more live streams coming up too. So what's today? Monday? We got podcast on Wednesday. So make sure everybody stay tuned, stays tuned for that. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks.